Spinosaurus, the number two seed, coming in here an inch short of 50 feet long and coming in just over seven tons. Has 12 feet four inches and three tons of weight over the number 15 seed, a very obscure dinosaur called Bahariosaurus engines. Uh, Bahariosaurus is really, we're, it's unknown what affiliation this theropod has. In this particular battle, he's coming in as a giant megaraptorid slash neovenator kind of mix. Uh, really long claws, relying on speed and those long claws to defeat Spinosaurus. Uh, Bahariosaurus quickly closed the distance, dashed by Spinosaurus' side, attacked him with those claws, relying on that speed, and was able to dodge Spinosaurus' bite and rip gargantuan slashes across Spinosaurus' tail. Uh, in the next pass, Bahariosaurus spun around again and went to the well one too many times trying to rip open Spinosaurus' tail, trying to just keep out of the way of that long bite from the almost six-foot skull. Uh, however, for Bahariosaurus, Spinosaurus also has long, strong claws on longer arms and stood up on two legs. People forget Spinosaurus is perfectly comfortable on two legs. Bahariosaurus clearly forgot. Spino caught him with a, with a powerful hand and just hooked him and brought him in. And Bahariosaurus ended it pretty quickly when the Spinosaurus was able to grab a hold of Bahariosaurus and just pick him away with his powerful bites. Bahariosaurus gave it a shot, but again, just too much power, too much weight and size for Spinosaurus. Our next battle is Spinosaurus, the number two seed in the tournament, Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, squaring off against Bahariosaurus engines. What's great about these is Stromer was involved in both of their namings. So in a way, you've got brother against brother in this battle. Part two, Bahariosaurus was, the, the material of it was well illustrated, and there's some decent photos of it, but it was destroyed in World War II just like the Spinosaurus material. Unlike the Spinosaurus material, however, no one's been able to relocate at least Bahariosaurus material that we're aware of. And every theropod analysis has put Bahariosaurus with a different group of meat eaters. So it could be a megalosaur, it could be a Salurosaur, maybe a Spinosaur, some have said Carcharodontosaur, Neovenator, Megaraptor. Every single cladogram comes up with a different solution. And what I'm proposing for this battle, or what we did, was we went ahead and made him some kind of me giant megaraptor slash hostile neovenator. Still, he's giving up well over 10 feet in length and well over three tons to Spinosaurus in this battle. And the way I envisioned him was this fast moving, heavily uh, muscled, very full of claws because the megaraptors have giant hand claws. And the thought was he would rely on his speed to try to get and do some a lot of damage to Spinosaurus and chop him up. But as you saw in the, in the audio, that wasn't what actually happened to Bor Bahariosaurus. And my thoughts are, what do you think about when, when paleontologists are dealing with some of these poorly known dinosaurs, what, what are your thoughts? I'd like to talk about that for a moment on just scrappy dinosaurs or where the material's missing, blown up in a war. Well, you always do the best you can when you're looking at an incomplete specimen. Most of what we find, obviously, is incomplete, but sometimes they're a lot more incomplete than you'd really like. Uh, and so you, you use the information that's available to you, and you draw what conclusions you can, and you do your best. And then you update it if and when somebody ever finds stuff. I've updated work that I've done before when we found something new. So uh, I, think, I think what we do with this fight works pretty well, you know, but... Uh, Hopefully someday somebody will find a skeleton. We can come back and look at this, point out all our mistakes. That's the fun part. Absolutely. And in Spinosaurus, material was found just this year that validated some assertions that were made many, many years ago about it being aquatic. And we updated all of our art. We changed out our material to make sure to reflect that latest in science. And that's, you're right, so wonderful. That's why they call it research, to keep searching, to search again, to look for new, exciting discoveries. So in this one, I think we got it right. Uh, Bahariosaurus, just too, too small. In real world, he would have run away. But in this particular battle, he's got to fight to the death. And I had him 
attack the sale. The thought process was he would just keep hitting and running and trying to stay out of the range of Spinosaurus. But the Spinosaurus hand claws are gigantic. People don't realize how long his arms were, how much power they had, and the claws themselves, they are near Megaraptor size, at least the, the largest claw in each hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, with the Bajariosaurus, with, with the claws that, that you mentioned there, you it's almost like a fighting fire with fire kind of scenario, and he does his best, but really size wins out on this one. Absolutely. So I, I think that maybe we should go back to Egypt and look for some more stuff. Sounds like a cool adventure. Okay, let's do it. Done. All right. 